The story goes, unemployment was expected to continue upward, trending toward 19%. Shocking, rather startling, simply astonishing. These are quotes from J.P. Morgan, Ian Shepherdson, and Chief International Economist James Knightley. What are they talking about? The May Jobs Report. The May 2020 Jobs Report was released on Friday, June 5th, and Chief International Economist James Knightley called it the biggest data surprise in history? The story goes, unemployment was expected to continue upward, trending toward 19%. Yet, we saw the number go from 14.7% to 13.3%. And yes, those are official numbers. We have officially gotten 2.5 million jobs back. Now, 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 yes, there was a Washington Post article that said that there was a misclassification error in this jobs report. And really, without those misclassifications, we would see unemployment just a bit higher. But that misclassification error would also make the April number, instead of 14.7%, it would make it 19.2%. Oh my gosh, so many numbers. I was never good at percents in high school. Well. That wasn't bad, but there's still so many. Let's, let's, let's stop with so many numbers. Let's talk about the good stuff. So I'll tell you what we know today and what it really means for you. Over 50% of the 2.5 million jobs that we got back are from the areas of leisure and hospitality. And that's good news because as the economy begins to reopen, we're starting to see more people go to restaurants and we're starting to see more construction. We're observing a return in retail and factory workers, delivery and laundry workers. And of course, when all these businesses reopen, we need janitorial services. So that's a significant tr contributor to the, these numbers. But one clear and dear to my heart is dentists and dental services jobs. Some more good news. The diffusion index, which was four for April, is on average 50 saying there is some jobs gained and some jobs lost from a variety of sectors. Well, in May, that number was 64%. We are even above the average, and that's just saying that the jobs returning are kind of diverse throughout the whole economy. And really what the Diffusion Index is pointing is that many more sectors gained jobs rather than lost them. So this is all good news, right? Euphoria. Well, not so fast, my pretty. I'm impersonating the director of economic research, Nick Bunker. And no, this is not a quote. But he basically said that we have to wait until a future jobs report comes out before we can truly judge the May jobs report. So we really shouldn't judge this too favorably, although it does look good in the interim. To prove this, we just need to really look at the history. The initial March jobs report said about 700,000 jobs lost. But in May, they upped that number to close to 900,000. And in the most recent jobs report, they upped that number further to 1.4 million. So really, they were off by about 100%. That being said, a partner at a consulting firm, Hamilton Place Strategies, he says he would be pretty surprised if the jobs end up going negative and we see an increase in employment rates in future months. So even the experts don't necessarily think the May numbers will reverse. But again, I need to temper your excitement because we are still at 13% unemployment. And in the Great Recession of the late 2000s, our highest number was about 10%. And I don't wanna to be too Debbie Downer, but I wanna be realistic. And some researchers are saying this 13% does not even include some of the workers that didn't participate in the survey and that were previously listed as employed. These researchers are saying that the numbers could increase by even as much as 3% if these workers were included in the survey. So yes, the stock markets rebounded amazingly on Friday between two and 3% for the DJI and the S&P 500. But once again, we need to be realistic and we need to understand that this jobs report is not completely accurate. It is also retrospective and we really need more data to confirm it. And one more consideration with the validity of the data is that the survey was conducted in the middle of the month, which is actually before a lot of the businesses reopened. Good thing. 
but also before the riots started happening throughout the US. So we don't necessarily have the concrete data in interpreting how the mass reopening of businesses throughout all 50 states and the protests and riots have affected the jobs. But we can confidently say that comparing April to May, April was focused on many temporary job losses, whereas May, although we still have 87% of the jobs lost being temporary, there was an increase by about 295,000 of permanent jobs lost relative to April. And just a little more doom and gloom is that the number of jobless people for five or more weeks went up by 8.8 .8 million in May, while the number jobless fewer than five weeks dropped to 3.9 million, down an astronomical 10.4 million from April jobs report. And yeah, you may be wondering how much has the Paycheck Protection Program done to service these numbers in the May jobs report? A lot of owners of different companies are confident that without the PPP, the jobs numbers wouldn't have improved so much. Many small business executives have been quoted as saying that they would not have been able to rehire their workforce without the PPP loans. And that's just simple economics. Without money, without demand, you really can't hire a workforce. And there was no demand. And for small business, the Paycheck Protection Program is really good and bad news because they were able to keep their workforce hired on, but the funds expire in July. So how is that gonna happen if the demand doesn't rise? The program is either gonna have to continue on, be extended by the government, or the demand is gonna to have to rise significantly. That means you and I, your average American, is gonna to have to go out and start spending at these small businesses if we are to keep them afloat without the Paycheck Protection Program. So one owner says that if the Paycheck Protection Program is not extended and the demand doesn't rise, that the PPP is all for naught. Another critical item to mention is that the more permanent jobs lost versus temporary, the more imperative it is to reevaluate your investing because the more likely it is to turn into a true recession rather than the V-shaped recovery we've been seeing. And please note, this is not necessarily my opinion. I am no professional. I've been telling you what the economists are saying. But overall, although the V-shaped recovery is encouraging, the permanent job losses on the rise is not so much. And like I said earlier, it is important to note that job data is retrospective and the markets are forward thinking. So when considering your investment decisions, it is imperative to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now there's a lot more data to dig into, including unemployment claims, which thankfully are kind of on the downward slope. The main reason you and I are even considering this job data is because we wanna make informed investing decisions. And really, there's no way that we're gonna be able to time the market and catch it at its low or know when to exactly sell out. So the key thing that you need to remember is during these emotional economic times is that you need to have a plan, be disciplined and stick to it. So what that means is investing consistently called dollar cost averaging, where you put the same amount in over a specified time period. And when you have a long-term thinking in mind, that's gonna be really no problem because we've always seen the markets go up in the long term. If you buy, if you're planning on buying them every single Monday, this Monday you're gonna buy and maybe it's gonna be expensive, but maybe the next Monday it's gonna go down and you're gonna get more for your money. Just like going to the grocery store and finding a sale. So I hope you guys found some value in this analysis of the jobs report data. And if you did, please drop a comment, subscribe, and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll be sharing more with you guys in the future. I love all you guys. Peace. Hey Cray, what month is it? It's the best month for job growth since 1939.